Welcome to the course on Game Theory in the Autumn Term 2020 at the University Mannheim. This is the third video of week 9. We are in section 5.3. We have seen the definition of pure strategies and the definition of mixed strategies. Now I come to the third notion, the notion of behavior strategies. So Gamma is again a finite, extensive game with or without chance moves and without perfect information. So a behavior strategy phi upper index i of the person player i is a map yeah, from the union over all plays alpha of the play alpha with a set of moves which are possible after alpha alpha where player i has to do the next move to the real interval from 0 to 1. And I want two properties. First, I want that the restriction for any alpha is a probability distribution on the set z of alpha of possible moves after the play alpha. That's a condition one. So I want that the sum of these values for all the possible moves after the play alpha is one. And the second condition comes from the non-perfect information because the player i does not know if now if two plays alpha and alpha tilde are in the same information set of the player i then he does not know in which play he is he cannot dis distinguish them therefore his the behavior strategy must give the same probability distributions on z of alpha and z of alpha tilde and that's written here as the second condition So these are the conditions which we need for behavior strategy of the player i. So then the set of behavior strategies of the player i is called an big phi upper index i. So and big phi is now again the product of all the sets of all behavior strategies of the players 1 to player m. So again here the player 0 is taken out. I have not yet defined behavior strategies for player 0. So phi is just the product of phi 1 to phi m. So a uh, remark for a fixed play alpha, the set of possible probability distributions over the set Z of alpha is of course a simplex whose dimension is the, the dimension of Z of alpha, the number of Z of alpha minus one. So for any alpha, we get the simplex. And now phi i is just the product over all such simplices. So it is itself a polytope. Now for the player zero, for player nature, in fact, we have already such a tuple in our hands. So the tuple w alpha, had been a tuple of probability distributions over the possible for, for each play over the possible moves after this play alpha if player zero plays after play alpha. So it can now be seen just as a fixed behavior strategy phi upper zero for the player zero for the player nature. And phi upper zero is then phi upper zero of alpha is then equal to w alpha. So in some sense, we have seen already such behavior, behavior strategies, namely for the player zero. We have a fixed one in our game. Now back to the person players. Now also here, like for the mixed strategies, I want to define now some part of a probability, namely the part for player i that his behavior strategy is compatible with a given play alpha. So on the way to alpha, it might be several at several places the player i might have to make the choice of a move. And he, to reach alpha, he has to make the correct move. And this now the number psi i of phi i alpha is just the product of the probabilities that he always does the correct move in the moves before alpha. So alpha is any given play in B. And now we take 
the product overall plays beta, which come before alpha, such that player i has to do the next move. And we take the product over the probabilities over all beta that he does at beta the correct move, which leads towards alpha. So in this way, we get now a new number, the product of these probabilities that he does a correct move all this in all pla places, all plays before alpha. And this is the number of psi i of phi i alpha. So it is the part of a probability for, of alpha, which comes from the behavior strategy phi i. And the analogous number for the player zero had already been defined in the last definition in part b for the given fixed behavior strategy of player zero, which was the tuple w alpha. So now I can define here again a probability for the player alpha given a fixed um, behavior strategy phi. So I get the map psi now from the set of all behavior strategies, big strategy combinations, big phi, and the set of all plays b to zero one. And for each fixed phi and fixed alpha, this is the probability that the play alpha is reached in the case of the combination phi of behavior strategies of all the players. So I don't have to involve the player zero here because he has a fixed behavior strategy, this tuple W alpha. But for the other players, now I have to, for each person player, I have to fix his, his behavior strategy phi upper index i. So in this number, of course, is defined again as a product. We take the product over all players, the person players and the player uh, nature um, of their probability numbers. So pi zero of alpha and the psi i of phi i alpha. This is the first line in this definition here. But the second one makes also a lot of sense. Um, so the second one arises as follows. One has to look at the definition of the psi i phi i alpha. So if you have this play alpha somewhere, then alpha is reached by other plays. And in all this, we have here some probability distribution for the corresponding next move. So this black part, this is the next move. And obviously, there's some number. And it depends now, for different players. We don't know who, who is playing in which play. But we have to take the product of all these numbers in order to reach here alpha. And yeah, the, the psi i phi i alpha, they pick up those numbers from a, for a given player. But we have to take the product of all these numbers for all players. So we take the product of all the numbers on this yeah, chain from the empty play to the play alpha. So sorry. So this now explains this probability psi of phi alpha. And um, in the mixed strategies, I had a lemma, and I can also formulate here a lemma. If I now fix this strategy combination of behavior strategies, then again, um, the map psi for phi fixed and restricted to f is again a probability distribution on f. So this is phi here, distribution on f. And yeah, and, and one can say even more about this map psi. If I have a play which is not final, then the probability to reach this play is the sum of the probabilities to reach the final place which come after this play. So if we know the probabilities of the final place, we can recover from them also the probabilities for the other all other plays. And now this lemma essentially at the end it, it, it implies especially that 
the probability to, re to reach the empty play at the beginning is just one. Yeah, in some sense it's equivalent to this lemma here. So now um, I come to the relation between behavior strategies and mixed strategies. So again, we have a finite extensive game with or without chance moves and without perfect information. And now for the theorem to work, I need something more. I need some uh, moderate, nice condition, which remedies the uh, lack of perfect information a little bit. Namely, I need the assumption that the game has perfect recall. So every player has a good memory. And the notations are as before. The set of pure strategies of player I is um, given as a list, SI1 to SI and I. And um, the information sets come from these tuples II, so II1 to II KI. And I need also to choose for each information set some representative. So IIB for B running through this index set for the information sets of player I, and I need then to choose some element alpha IB. So I need just some representative. It doesn't matter which one, but I need one representative for each information set. And now in part A of the theorem, I just compare the size of the spaces of mixed strategies of player I and of behavior strategies of player I. Behavior strategies we have seen before in the last theorem. We had seen that for each play, we get a simplex of um, probability distributions over the moves after the play. So in the dimension of the simplex is the number which we see here. But because of this um, non-perfect information, we, the behavior strategies, um, I can fix them only on um, information sets. So I just need one play for each information set. So I have to take here the sum over all plays in this, all representatives for the different information sets. So now that we come to this number here. And this is not so small, but not so large. Especially in general, it's much smaller than the dimension of the space of mixed strategies. The space of mixed strategies is, this mind, is the set of pure strategies. The dimension of the space of mixed strategies is the, the number of pure strategies minus one. And this is minus one plus the product of all the um, numbers of the sets of possible moves. Because here, for each pure strategy, at each play alpha i and b, the player i has to make a choice between one of the possible moves. So, and all choices together, is they form somehow a tuple, so we have a product space. So, therefore, the dimension of gi is minus one plus the product of the sizes of the sets of possible moves after these plays alpha i b, which are representatives of the information sets of player i. So here we have the product sign and we have the sum sign and therefore the dimension of GI in general is much, much larger than the dimension of the space of or space phi I of the behavior strategies. So and an imprecise positive statement, behavior strategies are much simpler to deal with than mixed strategies. So in this part A is just preliminary, it just compares the sizes. The main part B will tell um, that most often it's sufficient to work with behavior strategies instead of mixed strategies. There are much less of them and they are simpler to deal with, but they have they catch all the essential parts of the mixed strategies, namely this probability numbers. So in the last two definitions, we have seen some probability numbers or some maps in Psi for the behavior strategies and pi for the mixed strategies. And we will see that they have the same images. So in, in this result that it's possible most of the time to work with behavior strategies instead of mixed strategies would be important for a further development of the theory of extensive games without perfect information. But that further development will not be given here. But the first step is done here. And yeah, the first step indeed is in fact due to Herbert Kuhn from 1953, so from the very early days of game theory. 
So let me say it, just to show you the name here. Herbert Kuhn here had, has done the main part of the theorem. So now use the part B. We have this uh, probability number maps pi i for mixed strategies and psi i for behavior strategies from the last two definitions. And I can read them also as maps which map a mixed strategy, respectively a behavior strategy, to a map from the set of all plays to the interval of real numbers between 0, 0, 0, 1. Yeah, and um, the, the two lemmata which I formulated in the two videos say that uh, the restrictions of these maps to the subsets f here and also the subset f here, they are probability distributions over these subsets f. And additionally, I say that um, the values for the other place, they can be recovered from the values for this subset f of finite place. The probability of some other play is just the sum of the probabilities of the finer plays which come after the other play. So, so we get here maps which can be thought of as certain probability distributions or enriched probability distributions. And now we have to see how they differ. So we have the following natural data and observations. Um, there is a natural equivalence relation on the set of behavior strategies of player i. So then we get a quotient phi i bar and um, the map psi i pulls down or induces an injective map downstairs for the equivalence classes. So the equivalence relation is natural and that means especially um, the psi i um, is well defined on the quotient. So two equivalent behavior strategies have this, give the same map on from B to 0, 1, or have the same image under, under Psi i. In fact, the psi, this uh, equivalence relation is kind of a forget map. So um, it forgets irrelevant parts of the behavior strategies. But it will not be more precise today. So then, we have a natural injective map from the mixed, from the behavior strategies to the mixed strategies. And you will study this hopefully in exercise two from sheet nine. So this part two, part two here, you will be in, done in exercise two of the sheet nine. So there you, this you will understand well, you will have to work through it and understand it. And finally, um, we cannot completely go backwards from gi to phi i, but almost we can go backwards from gi to the set of equivalence classes of phi, so to phi i bar. This is which is almost as good. So and then all together we get a rather nice complicated diagram of maps, and I say the diagram commutes, which means that if you, have, if you have two compositions of maps which start at the same point and end at the same point, then they coincide. So here is the diagram. So on the upper left corner, you see the set of behavior strategies of player i. On the upper right corner, you see the much larger space of mixed strategies of player i. We have this ejective map gi behavior from phi i to gi here. And exercise two of sheet nine will tell you that it's injective and it's very natural. Then we have the projection to the equivalence class. And I claim that you can go back from GI not to phi i, but downstairs to this equivalence class. And this triangle here commutes. That means um, if I go first from phi i to GI and then go down to phi i bar, then it's the same as a projection. So that's the meaning of this um, commuting, commuting diagram here. This triangle, this commutes here. Let me erase this now. So, and also we have maps 
Psi i from phi i to the maps downstairs. And I said that already that we have again a um, commutation. So psi i doesn't depend only on the equivalence class. So two equivalent behavior strategies have the same image. That means that this diagram here commutes. So I can go in the diagonal from phi i directly to the maps here. Or I can do go down first by the projection and then by this induced map to the maps. So this also commutes. And this was a, this commuting was the um, result of, was once part of the statement of one here. Let me again erase this. So, and then finally, we have also this map which almost returns the GI behavior, but not completely. This fire I mixed bar, and I had it already just. And um, again, we have here a nice commutation. So this triangle also commutes. So I can first go from GI to phi I bar, and then I can go by this induced map to the maps uh, from B to zero one. And, but I could also go directly there from with pi I. So in this diagram also commutes. So let me write this down, the pi I is equal to pi i is equal to the psi i bar after phi i mixed bar. So this is the last commuting triangle here. So we have quite a lot of statements in this diagram here. And this beautiful diagram then implies especially that the maps psi i and pi i have the same image. And I think, yeah, I think we do, I'm not sure whether we get all probability distributions over f, but possibly yes, I'm not sure. But they have in any case the same image, and this image is really what is important for the study of, these, of this situation here. Therefore, if we start with a mixed strategy, we can go to the corresponding equivalence class of this behavior strategies, and then we can go up and choose some representative, and then instead of the mixed strategy, work with this, represent, with, this, with this behavior strategy. It's not unique, but it's good enough. And it will have the same image under this map Psi as the original mixed strategy here. So um, the proof is not so difficult, but it's sufficiently involved and rather long. When I gave this class on game theory for the first time in the autumn term 2011, I had written down the proof, but later I found that, that it takes too much place and time and is not sufficiently important, so then I skipped it. And the proof should be split into several lemmata in which the data of 1 to 3 above are constructed. One has to do several steps, so there is some work, but it's not so difficult. Um, and the main part had been done by Herbert Kuhn, 1953, so in the very early times of game theory. And the main part is this commutation of this triangle here. You see the map here, it's the same which I wrote down here before there. So, um, yeah, we, we, this diagram tells us that instead of mixed strategies, most of the time we can work just as with, with behavior strategies and they are much easier to deal with. They are much less data involved. So now a final remark. Um, same situation, we have a final extensive game without perfect information and with perfect recall. And then the old theorem 3.3 on finite games in normal form tells us that the mixed extension of the associated game in normal form has at least one Nash equilibrium. So we can choose such a Nash equilibrium, then this is a combination of mixed strategies. And by theorem 530, which we just have seen, we can obtain a combination of behavior strategies such that the, 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 the classes of the behavior strategies are the images of the mixed strategies under this map phi i mixed bar. And then this combination is com then corresponds to this Nash equilibrium. So it is, uh, it is a rather good or at least interesting combination of behavior strategies. 
and it's a rather good and interesting solution of the game gamma. Okay, and this should be the start of the theory, but here I will stop. I will not continue. But you have seen several important concepts, so pure strategies, mixed strategies, behavior strategies, and relations between them. So thank you very much for attention.